My sons, today we're going to speak about Carmel totus Marianus est. Okay, that saying means Carmel is totally Marian. Now that is a very ancient saying. I don't believe we even know from what saint of our order the, that motto came from, but it sums up the whole of Carmel. Okay, Carmel is totally Marian. Even many pontiffs have proclaimed the Order of Carmel as the preeminent order of the Blessed Virgin. Now, this conviction comes from our first fathers on Mount Carmel. They believed that Our Lady lived in the midst of their brotherhood, that she pervaded the whole of their lives. They experienced her as their sister who was forming them. And that is why they called themselves the brothers of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary Mount Carmel, something they got very persecuted for. So they believed that Our Lady was forming every part of their charism, their way of life, and their spirituality, so that Carmel is totally married. Okay, Arnold Bostius, writing in 1479, proclaimed, The order of Carmel is not a creation from below, but rather the opposite, a creation from above. The initi initiative to found the order does not derive from some human intuition or need, but from the motherly hand of Mary. And that is the way our fathers have always looked at the order of karma. That it's not a creation from some human being here on this earth. No, it's a creation from Our Lady. From her uh, being crowned as Queen of Heaven and Earth, God gave her this great prerogative of founding her own order here on earth. So we say that the Blessed Virgin herself gave birth to the Order of Carmel. She determined and formulated every aspect of the charism of Carmel. Arnobostius says this, It could not happen that she whose head is held high like Carmel, and who is the beauty of Carmel, should not love the Order, cultivate it, and irrigate it in a special way. So yes, Our Lady's always cultivating her order. And the Order of Carmel is a big order in the church, okay, with many different expressions of the Marian life. And so us monks, as the monks of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary Mount Carmel, we have our own particular expression and way of life and spirituality within the Order of Carmel. But all Carmelites look to the Blessed Virgin as our model. Arnold Bostius goes on to explain, Mary is the bearer of the law of Elijah. She is the legislator of the whole society of Carmel. And she is rightly called the primary foundress. Thus, what branches are from the trunk, members for the head, rays for the sun, streams for the source, in the same way, the dwellers on Carmel acknowledge themselves debtors of the most serene Lady Mary in a just, grateful, memorial, and devout way. If we are great debtors of the parents of our bodies, of the authors of our good fortune, who do we not, what do we not owe the mother and educator of our salvation and the foundress of our very order? So yes, we owe Our Lady of Mount Carmel everything. So when something is truly authentic in Carmel, it always has its reference back to the Blessed Virgin. Okay, and that is what we are attempting to do, my sons. We are going back to the very source, okay? Like Arnold Bosius says, you know, the, the, the streams need to go back to their source, okay? That's very much what Perfecti Caritatis wanted of all religious 
to return to the spirit of the founder or foundress. Now, Arnold Bosch just makes this very clear that she is the foundress. Okay, even though our first fathers settled on Mount Carmel near the spring of Elijah, they did not call themselves the sons of Elijah or the brothers of Elijah. No, they chose the title, the brothers of the most blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. So our fathers see the charism as coming from the heart of the Blessed Virgin. Okay, that is the genesis of the charism of Carmel. It comes directly from her heart. Now, when we look at a founder, they are truly the model of what we are supposed to be. So every Benedictine looks to St. Benedict, okay, to St. Benedict's rule. And they strive to become a true son of St. Benedict. Okay, correct? Yes? That's what, if I was a Benedictine, that's what I would do. Same thing with a Dominican in the order of preachers. Every Dominican wants to imitate their father, St. Dominic. Okay, to imitate his preaching, especially his devotion to Our Lady, the Most Holy Rosary. Okay, and to perpetuate his charism. Okay, this is how it works. So for us, we look to the Blessed Virgin Mary as our foundress. Now, what does that mean? Okay, it means everything. When we say that Our Lady is the foundress of the Order of Carmel, absolutely means everything. So it means we strive to imitate first, you know, as a, as a postulant, a novice, you come into the monastery, you try to imitate her life. Okay, you're trying to do all the things that the Blessed Virgin Mary would do in this cloister, in, the, in these uh, walls of Carmel. And so we look to her for our way of life. We look to her for our spirituality, first and foremost. We try to enter into her heart and understand everything the way the Blessed Virgin understands it. Okay, we go back and we, we read scripture and we find all those passages in scripture that talk about the Blessed Virgin Mary. How beautiful you are, how comely, my love, my delight. Your head is held high like Carmel. Okay, we're going to scripture and we're, we're feeding our souls on all those passages that have to do with the Blessed Virgin. Another beautiful one that Our Lady tells every Carmelite. I led you into the land of Carmel to eat the fruit thereof and the best things thereof. Okay, from Jeremiah. Now, everything we do, we try to imitate Our Lady. We try to imitate her humility, her charity, okay, her perfect obedience. We try to see her spirituality towards her divine son. We want to enter into that relationship. So when it comes to Our Lady, we, we strive to go into the paradise of her heart. Okay, I like to think it uh, think of her heart as the mystical enchanted Carmel. Okay, the place where she's drawing every Carmelite deeper and deeper and deeper into that paradise. Okay, and that's where she wants us Carmelites to dwell. She wants us to live and move and have our being in her heart where she can bring us to the, the, the fountainhead of, of her love, okay? All, that spring where we can be nourished from the love of her heart. Okay, she, like St. Louis de Montfort says, she wants us to bring all the debris of our souls, okay, and bring it to that centered furnace of love in her heart. And she wants us to cast into that furnace all of our miseries so that she can transform us in herself. Okay, so for us Carmelites, we believe this is the true means to our real end as Carmelites, to reach the transforming union, to reach divine union with God. And that most perfect way for every Carmelite is to go deeper and deeper into the heart of the Blessed Virgin, to let her transform you, okay, to let her shape you in her mold, okay, where she fashioned, you know, the very Son of God, okay, she, she wants to be that for us. 
okay? And she wants to make great saints here. So my sons, this is what we are called to as the brothers of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary Mount Carmel, uh, as monks of the Most Blessed Mary, Virgin Mary Mount Carmel. Let us go deep into her heart and there be nourished on all the fruits thereof and the best things thereof. In nomine Patris, Filius, Spiritus, Sancti. Amen.